I'd like to talk about sort of basic computation you're doing when you're talking about an infinite impulse response structure. Now you may be familiar with an FIR structure, uh, and I want to talk about what does an imp infinite impulse response structure look like. Now if you take a look at it, again remember where this is being placed, is that we're having an x of t here, there's usually some, you know, this is a continuous time variable, there's going to be some sort of ideal um, continuous to discrete conversion, some sort of sampling, that all has to be taken into account, uh, and then I go through this transformation, through this IIR block, that goes into y of n, what I do with it then, interesting questions, but there's a whole bunch of pieces and you must always kind of keep all this together. So when you look at it for, for an IIR structure, what you're going to see is that you, you have your y of n, which is your output, is equal to a whole bunch of x of n's. So x of n on b, so it's just sort of a, a straightforward thing. This is exactly what you would have expected if you had an FIR structure. And in fact, you can see this x structure being the x of n going in through all of these delays and then coming through a whole bunch of weighting coefficients. And you think, great, that works. And that looks exactly like what you'd expect for an FIR structure. But what you have in addition is additional feedback structures where now effectively if you look at the math or you look at the, the block, and I tend to like to look at the blocks first, is you're actually now going to take that output and now delay it, and you have that value delayed one step, two steps, and maybe up to m steps. And, and, and certainly these could be different sizes, they often are, but just to kind of make a, a picture of this. And what you end up seeing is you have all of those with its own coefficients. So it's sort of another vector vector matrix, another vector vector multiplication of these terms. Um, obviously, these can get extended for multiple outputs to vector vector multi multiplication. But what you're getting is you're getting a way to deal with all of these feedback terms, and you have to have additional delays and st steps for this. And there's a lot of interesting questions of why you would approach adding the feedback. There's a lot of, of temporal behavior. As soon as you get to IR structures, what you also find is that the impulse response H of n tends to be of infinite length. So that has its pluses and minuses depending on what you're trying to do. But this certainly gives you a way to kind of talk about how you would build one of these structures.